Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis. Today, I will explain you the concept of the limit points of zero. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the complex analysis. In this playlist, you can see the various theory lectures and the previous CSR night and the gate lectures are available in this playlist. You can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel. What we have discussed so far, we have classified the different kind of the singularities in our previous lectures, name as pole, removable, essentials, isolated, non-isolated, and many more. You must watch it and try to learn the concept of this singular. In this lecture, I will tell you another way how you can classify the isolated essential singularity through the very beautiful concept known as limit points of the zero. You can see, I already explained you the concept of the isolated singularities. But in this lecture, I will tell you the another way. First of all, what is a zero? For any function f of z, if I consider f of z is my analytic function, when z is equal to z0 is said to be z is equal to z0 is said to be the zero of f z. So the zero means whenever you can substitute the value of the z0 in the given functions, the answer will be zero. It is look like say the root of the function. So whenever f of z0 is my zero, then you can say z0 is my root or called as the zeros of the functions. In other words, we can target to find the value of the z so that f of z is my zero. For example, if I simply choose the value is z plus three, then clearly say z is equal to minus three is the zero of f z. Fine. If I consider another example, say sine of z, then clearly say z is equal to zero is the root of this function, z is equal to pi is the root of this function, z is equal to two pi is the root of the function and so on. Whenever we can say the zero is of order one m, the meaning is the function value at the point zero is my zero, the first derivative at the point z zero is also my zero, second derivative at the point z zero is also my zero and so on. The m minus one derivative at the point is also zero. But because the function is of order m, that means the mth order, mth derivative the function value is my non-zero. That implies the function fz has z is equal to z zero is the zero of order m. Fine. So I hope you can recognize with the numerical analysis that the zeros are called as the roots of the function f z. In other words, the point z is equal to z zero is called the zero of order m. If you can expand in the Taylor series and you can see I started from the value of the m. The previous values m minus ones are my zero. Therefore, I can start from the m. In other words, you can also say the point z is equal to z zero is called as the zero of order m if and only if you can expand the function f z in the form of z minus z zero raised to power m of phi z, where phi z is my analytic functions and phi at the point z zero is my non-zero. That is a formal definition of the zero of order m. Now, whenever you have find the zeros of the non-constant function, for example, if I consider the f of z is my sine of z, so can you find the zeros of the f z? So clearly say the zeros are my zero, zeros are my pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. So clearly say there are infinitely many zeros, and the result is whatever the zeros of the non-constant analytic functions, that they are all isolated zeros. That means the value of the zero pi, two pi, and pi all are my isolated points. What is the meaning of the isolated point? If you consider any point z zero inside the neighborhood, the function value is my non-zero. The proof is very simple. I can assume that the function f has a zeros of order m. Then, by the definition, I can write the f of z is z minus z zero raised to power m phi of z, where phi is my analytic functions and phi of z zero is my non-zero. Now, since 
f is my analytic functions this implies phi is also or you can say the phi is my analytic functions this implies phi is my continuous once you can see the phi is continuous we can apply the epsilon delta definitions i can choose the epsilon which is greater than 0 there exists a delta such that phi of z minus phi of z not less than epsilon i can substitute the value of the epsilon phi of z 0 whenever z minus z 0 is less than delta that is the definition of the continuity now let's start with the because i can start with the epsilon fine this number is okay because the modulus value is always be greater than 0 and this because the function is continuous so it is always be less than of mod of phi of z i can add i can write the phi of z how you can write that i can add the phi i can add the z0 and i can subtract the z0 on the both side now clearly say if you use the inequality of a plus b which is less than equal to a plus mod of b so i consider this is my a this is my b but the inequality is already strictly less than so instead of the less than equal to i can simply say this is my less than of phi z minus phi 0 plus phi z what is the value of phi z minus phi 0 which is strictly less than half phi of z 0 plus phi of z 0 now you can see if you take the lcm it will be 3 over 2 phi of z 0 now clearly say what is the left hand side is phi of z 0 which is less than of phi of z now you can see phi of z 0 is strictly greater than 0 that means phi of z 0 is not 0 so the right hand side right inequality is non zero left inequality is non zero this implies phi of z is my non zero once the phi of z is my non zero this implies f of z is also non zero in the neighborhood of z minus z zero what does it implies if phi of z is my non zero that means z zero is my isolated point also z zero is my any arbitrary point so this implies all the zeros we have obtained of the analytic functions are my isolated points i will explain you with the help of the numeris numeris examples in this lecture too you can watch the video till the end now come to the main point the limit points of the zero of the analytic function is my essential singularities fine remember whatever the limit point like if you find the zeros if i consider the function is my sin z fine the zeros are 0 pi 2 pi and so on up to the n pi then if you find the limit point as n approaches infinity of this zero as n approaches infinity this is infinity so this result says z is equal to infinity is the essential singularity of the function sin z that's the most important property and the beautiful results for this problem the proof is very simple or in other word you can say if you have the function of the analytic functions e is a set of all those zeros which consist of the limit point alpha then either the function is my zero or it has the isolated essential singlet proof is a very very simple since the function is my analytic given to you and every analytic function is my continuous so we can start with the limit points so let alpha is the limit point of the sequences of the zeros what is the meaning of the sequences again if i consider 1 over z if i consider then what are the zeros zeros means sin of 1 over z is 0 that implies 1 over z is my n pi so my sequences is 1 over n pi fine for the different value of the n it is my 1 over pi 1 over 2 pi 1 over 3 pi these are my sequences of the zeros fine so let's say alpha is the limit point of the sequence of the zero in this particular example what is my alpha if you take the limit as n approaches infinity so alpha is my zero in this particular example of the sign 1 over z now 
since alpha is the limit point of the sequence, f is my continuous function. So you have the two different cases. Either f is my zero or f is my non-zero. So first case, if f is my zero, but you all know alpha is the limit point, fine. Alpha is the limit point of the zero and by using the previous result, alphas, that is the zeros are my isolated. That implies that f of z is my zero for all alpha, fine. That itself implies that f of alpha is my non-zero. So, but f is my continuous, this implies the function is itself zero for all those z in the domain capital D. Case second, when the function is my non-zero for all the D, then f must have a singularities, but remember that the zeros are my isolated, but f of z is my not infinity. So what does the meaning of that? If there is not infinity, that means there is no pole, or you can say there is no singularity occurs. Once there is no singularities or there is no pole, that means the function is my isolated singularity, but not a pole. Once you can say the isolated singularity, therefore the limit points are all my isolated essential singularities. Now look at the first examples. I will tell you the seven plus examples in this lecture. I hope you can like and comment on the video as well. So examine the nature of the singularity. Firstly, check whether z is equal to zero is the singularity or not. What is the meaning of the singularity? You can substitute the value of the z if this value will goes to the infinity or if this value is my undefined then you can say the point is my singularity fine so firstly we will see what is the value of the f of zero which is my sine of infinity which is not unique because the sine value is always lies between minus one to plus one but we are unable to find the exact value that's not a unique that is undefined. Yes, z is equal to zero is my singularity. So how you can find that? Let's start with the limit point of. So can you find the zeros? What is the zeros of the sine one over z? Can you find the zeros of sine one over z? So what is the zeros? Zero means you have to find the value of z so that sine one over z is my zero. Can you find the value of the z? One over z is my n pi where n is my integer, so that means z is my 1 over n pi, where n is my integers, fine. Now can you find the limit point of this? So what is the limit point as n approaches infinity of z, which is 0. So therefore, z is equal to 0 is my limit point of zeros. So once by using the previous result, every limit point of the 0 is known as isolated essential singularities. So z is equal to zero is my isolated essential singularities of sine one over z. The same example I already explained in my previous lecture of the singularities. You can see the other way how you can solve this solution. But always remember this is the quite easiest way to get your answers in a reasonable time. Look at the second one. Examine the nature of the singularities at z is equal to infinity. So firstly, you can see whether infinity is a singularity or not. Clearly say sine infinity minus cos infinity, which is not defined. So yes, this is a singularity. On the other hand, if somebody will ask you, calculate the singularity at the point zero. Is that zero is a singularity? So sine zero is zero, cos zero is one, which is a finite number. So that means z is equal to zero is not singularity, fine. So once it's not a singularity, it is not a pole, it is not a removable, it is not essential, not isolated. So the function is analytic at zero. Anyhow, in this case, we are talking about the infinity. So firstly, we will talk about the zeros of the fz. So what is the zeros of the fz? So you can say the sine z is equal to cos z, which implies tan of z is my one, that implies z is pi over 4 plus n pi, where n is my integers, fine, or plus minus. So can you find the limit point? So as n approaches infinity, so the limit point of the 
zeros is what will happen if you take limit as n approaches infinity so it's a infinity so z is equal to infinity so once the limit point of the zero so infinity is my isolated essential singular is that z is equal to 1 is a singularity so what is the value of the f of 1 sin of infinity which is not defined yes this is the singularity can you find that zeros again 1 over 1 minus z is my n pi this implies 1 minus z is equal to 1 over n pi so that implies z is equal to 1 minus 1 over n pi where n is my integer once you can find the limit point you can find the limit so what is the limit point of the z so the limit point of the zeros is as n approaches infinity this value will goes to the zero so that value is my 1 so therefore z is equal to 1 is my isolated essential singular specify the natures at z is equal to minus of 2 so clearly say f of minus 2 is my 1 into sin of infinity which is not defined yes this is my singularity can you find the zeros zeros you can find this implies z plus 3 is equal to 0 or sin of z 1 over z plus 2 is equal to 0 that implies z is equal to minus 3 or 1 over z plus 2 is equal to n pi so can you find the value of the z z is equal to minus 3 or z is equal to minus 2 plus minus 1 over n pi if i consider this is my plus minus where n is my integers fine now can you find the limit point so clearly say the limit point of the zeros is if you take n approaches infinity this will goes to the zero this value will be my minus of 2 hence minus of 2 is my isolated essential singularity make sure z is equal to minus 3 is not singularity z of minus 3 is my zero which is my finite that implies Minus of three is not singularity. Fine. So that's why the limit point minus two is the only singularity known as isolated essential singularity. Find the zeros of the functions and discuss the nature of these. So look at that. I can write this function is z minus two is the one part sine one over z minus one is a single divided by z square. Fine. So the zeros, zeros means when you substitute the numerator part to be the zero. So the numerator part means z minus two sine of one over z minus one is is equal to zero. So can you find the value of the z from the first case? You can find the two from the second case. Z minus one is plus minus n pi. So that implies z is equal to two and z is equal to one plus minus one over n pi fine and the and the quantity which you have put as the denominator as a zero that is called as the pole and z square is equal to zero is my pole can you find the limit point so what is the limit point of the zeros limit point of the zeros is as n approaches infinity this value will be zero so z is equal to 1 is the limit point fine so once z is equal to 1 is the limit point So therefore, it is my isolated singularity. In this case, you can see z is equal to zero and zero. Therefore, z is equal to zero is the pole of multiplicity two. Fine. Okay. So uh, we will discuss. This is the limit point of the zeros, and we discuss about the isolated singularity. In the next lecture, we will discuss how you can check whether the point is my non isolated singularity or not for that we will discuss the concept of the limit points of the pole you can watch the previous lectures till then you can share this video you can like and comment on this videos happy learning always and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel best of luck students thanks for the watching